What's going on guys? We are back with another video. Um, today the outro is going to be the intro. So I actually went fishing yesterday. Um, went up to one of my favorite lakes to ice fish, Lake Mille Lacs in Minnesota. Um, didn't really know too much about how the ice conditions were. Um, have not been up there yet this winter yet. Um, and Mille Lacs is obviously a big lake. It gets a lot of ice fishing pressure. So if you can get there before the big crowd a lot of times, like before they're letting wheelhouses out or they're staking roads and stuff like that, um, you can get on some really quality fishing. Good numbers of walleyes, good average size walleyes, good jig bite, just good walleye fishing overall. So um, kind of Mille Lacs is an interesting lake if you're not familiar with it. Generally there's a lot of rocks, um, sand and gravel break lines close, you know, within a mile or two of shore. Then in the middle of the lake, um, there's a lot of what's called mud flats, which is kind of a characteristic that's neat, unique to Mille Lacs. What a mud flat basically is, is uh, a soft bottom hump. Very fertile with bug life, less attracting a lot of bait and predatory fish altogether. So um, there's fish honestly all over Mille Lacs, whether you're in shallow rocks, uh, deep gravel, mud flats. Um, but I always like fishing the mud flats because generally early in the season like this, when it's just snowmobile ATV traffic, it's pretty much a ghost town out there. So um, follow along. I got myself obviously going. We got uh, good buddy Cody and his girlfriend going. And this is going to be a fairly raw uncut video of just uh, a day out of Mille Lacs. So I try to put some informational pieces in there as I can. Um, but uh, yeah, enjoy. I'm about to go fishing um, on a different lake today. Thanks for watching. What's going on guys? Just had one hit the dead stick here. Let's see what we got. That feels like the right species we are after. That feels like a good one. Could be wrong. A little lighter tackle I got here on this rod. Oh yeah, that feels like a good one. What do we have? Oh, he does not like coming up this hole. Come on. Oh, right there, guys. Look at that. That's what you come. Oh, little squirrely guy. That's what you come to Malax for. Look at that fish. He is just upset. We'll hurry up and get this one back. Oh boy, this is crazy. Trying to get the camera rolling here. Literally just caught that other fish. Like, oh, just a second ago. Looked down, had a mark on the jigging rod. This is what we got, he ate that Acme spoon. Oh my goodness. Not a huge one, but a fun one, nonetheless. There's been more of his species caught on that little spoon. Maybe not that size, but that spoon. Beautiful Malax walleye there. You will grow up to be a giant someday, buddy. All right, guys. First iFish Pro of the day here. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. And there we go. Dead sticking is just a super productive way to really catch fish anywhere. You know, we've only been out here for a little bit caught a couple jigging now but they're not racing up and anytime you can get additional lines it's obviously nice and what I'm using here is uh, a new product from Acme this year it's the D chain it's a dropper chain spoon it's the same Castmaster body that we've fished uh, forever and caught a ton of fish on but now it's got a drop chain and the first thing I saw this um, it's gonna be awesome for finicky walleyes it's gonna be awesome for perch and I love this thing for a dead stick. You don't need an inline weight, just put a fat head on there. It's got plenty of flash, plenty of color. And there's our first walleye on the D chain of the day. Tip that thing with just a little fat head. We're gonna let that one go. Beautiful Mille Lacs walleye on the dropper chain. There we go. Another one on. Actually, this is probably about a half dozen walleyes in at this point. Just haven't filmed any of them. Um, like I said, I kind of got up here late, so I've been doing a lot of the leg work, which I normally, there we go. There's another piece of Mille Lacs walleye right there. I've kind of been doing a lot of the leg work that it takes to get out here your first time of the year and find them. That one punched a uh, eighth ounce. That pink gold cast master has been awesome out here. It is every year for me. There's a nice about 18, 19 inch. We'll let them go. But basically what we're seeing out here, um, 
you know, like I said, we're out here in the mud today, and uh, you know, early in the morning, um, these fish were kind of right up on top. We we're seeing a lot of fish right on top of this thing, 26, 27 feet. You know, typically this time of day they start sliding off. Some days they'll stay up top the whole time, um, but like I said right away, you know, it's good drilling a lot of holes, doing a ton of moving, a ton of looking around, because when you're on them, you know when you're on them. I'm lax. It's all good. Tom's just doing all the work today. Mm -hmm. Just being a being a stellar guide. He's like driving around, hitting up different flats, just the tips of them, you know, just the tip. But we're just kind of like hunkered out here in the first spot, just waiting for him to be like, "Yeah, found the mother load," and then we'll consider moving. All right, well, big move in the middle of the day. Our morning bite kind of dried up. It's about 11 o'clock now. Um, caught some fish. I spent more time drilling holes than actual fishing, but uh, we got Cody following up with the sled and everything else we need. So um, we're gonna get to punch some holes and hopefully catch a whole bunch more black walleyes. Hooked up, and this is a good one. <laughs> just came up and smoked me. I was just changed the battery in a GoPro. And he came up and smacked it. Let me get my deucer out of here quick. He's right at the hole now. This is where we want to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's chunker right there. We'll take that. You want to see where that cast master is? Absolutely gone. That's how you know they're biting it right there. There we go guys. Beautiful Malax walleye. Absolutely devoured that cast master we're gonna need some tools just to get it out i've been kind of going through a couple of different spoons today and uh the one i've kind of landed on i'll show you here it seems to be the best option so far but that is awesome look at that it's about a 24 inch we're gonna get that one back quick there he goes kick away buddy but anyways the spoon i'm using for the most part today is uh, this Castmaster in a uh, 1 8 ounce. I'm not using the rattle one. I had the rattle one on this morning. They were just kind of sluggish. So whatever fish are just, they seem a little bit hesitant, I'll kind of take the rattle away. Um, and then yeah, that's the 8 ounce pink on one side. It's got that UV glow gold on the back. I love everything gold. Um, and pink's always been a good color for me out here. Tipping it with just a minnow head or half the time they're coming up so fast you probably wouldn't even need to tip it. But um, whenever I'm fishing a lake that has a lot of bigger fish in it like Mille Lacs does, um, I'll go and I'll take off a lot of the stock hooks that come with baits. And basically what I'll do is I'll put on the fitting size kind of that the size that's on there i'll go one size up generally in a gamagatsu round bend so that's a uh, number eight gamagatsu round bend just has a lot more holding power for bigger fish a lot better hookup ratio overall so that's the setup that's as easy as it is you guys got another one coming up another one coming up here and we got him on <laughs> cody another good one All right, I think all GoPros are rolling here. Just let that nice fish go and pop this one right away here. Come here, buddy. He's right at the hole. This is where you lose him. It's gonna be another nice one. Not quite as big. Hooks off right at the hole. Look at that. Another chunker though, we'll take that. I absolutely love this lake. I wish I could get up here a million more times throughout the course of the year. But uh, it is an absolute blast. Literally just caught that last tulipie. She drops back down. Drops right back down and hooked up instantly. See him yet? No. Oh, there he is. Oh, it's not a huge one, but it's a nice one. There, oh, lift him up. There you go. That is your first walleye oh, on the lax. Mm -hmm. On a jig stick. All right, so basically how I like to work these cast masters. Now we're fishing in about 25, 26 feet right now on top of this flat. I'll get it down to kind of like eight feet up, off bottom. I'll just hop it around like this a little bit. And then that last eight feet, I'll kind of slowly ease it down incrementally a little bit. Because if there is a fish right down there, a lot of times they hate when it just kind of free falls right on top of them. And when you hold that thing up like six, eight, 10 feet above them, 
you know, real clear water like Black's is in the winter right now. Um, you sit that thing up there and pound it up high, and a lot of fish around you can see that thing. And a lot of times, even when your bait's way up high, those fish will kind of gravitate um, right underneath you, and kind of you can kind of tease them up after that. So once I'm down there, basically what I'll do, I'll kind of do some of these bigger hops first, like this, kind of more of the attracting phase here. And then I'll kind of mix in just these rattles. I'll just sit there and rattle it like this. And I'm dropping my rod about three inches so it gets slack line. Basically what that spoon's doing, is just sitting there and doing this down there. Doing a lot of flashing, a lot of rattling, and uh, a lot of noise. And most of the time when you're doing this, this is when you would get bit. Now, if a fish starts coming in, basically the first thing I start doing is start trying to work them up like this. And I'll just kind of keep pulling up, you know, a couple feet. I get them to chase up. And each fish is different, each day is different. Sometimes they'll all chase up super high. Other days you'll sit there and you'll just pounce it in place a little bit more. But basically I'll, I'll sit like this with my bait two or three feet off bottom in deeper water like this. And I'll do this for a little bit. And then I'll mix in some of these bigger pops like this to kind of try to attract a fish in again. And I'll keep going back and forth from these kind of pops like this where the bait's basically a cast master when you rip it like this it goes like this and then it falls so it has kind of like a almost makes like a like a big diagonal when it comes back down it's not a flutter spoon so it doesn't turn sideways that much but it has this real kind of erratic side to side deal um, that definitely attracts a lot of fish in and then you know let's like let's say right now I start seeing a fish first thing I'll do if he starts creeping up at me is I go straight to this bounce not this bigger pop, but more just this bounce like this. And I'll start raising the rod up and try to get him to chase. And a lot of times, you know, you'll be, you'll get that fish to come up a little bit, but he won't commit. And a lot of times I'll drop, you know, back down closer to him and try to work him back up again. But most of the bites you're gonna get on a spoon like this is when you're gonna see that fish below your spoon, you're gonna start raising it up like this, and then you'll raise it up a couple feet and they'll come up and slap it. And we are hooked up. Ooh, this feels, this feels like a good one on the beaver dam. Anytime you can maximize your lines, we each get two lines here, so I like to run kind of a bigger sucker, a big shiner on one of these. Because a lot of times you can get some of your bigger bites of the day on these. He's right here now. Oh yeah. Look at that black <laughs> walleye. Another awesome fish on the beaver dam. Great tool, you know, when you're out here doing stuff like this. We're hole hopping a ton, moving around a ton. Uh, but we'll kind of, you know, throw these on the corners of our spot. And, you know, if we start seeing fish kind of coming on one side or the other, then obviously we don't go jig over there. All right, you guys, so we can see we got this fish hooked deep. So basically what I do, kind of get the line tight with just a little bit of pressure. You come in through the gill, you grab that treble, and all you really do is just spin it sideways like this and you can see now basically all we'll have to do is just lift the treble right out so no harm to that fish even though he's hooked deep awesome wax wally there on the beaver dam we'll get him back because as i was just jigging i missed an absolute giant over there dude they are hooked up in the shack again this feels like a good one Getting to be prime time. Big head shakes. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a nice walleye. Just came undone. Right there. Let me get some light going. Nice. So it's getting to be prime time here. to work that one a little bit but once he committed to it it was game over feels like a decent one he's already right here oh yeah that's another chunky right there <laughs> prime time is the right time that one's on that rattle master i went back to a little bit of noise here at sundown and that one ate it good